Hello, my name is Scott Milliken. I'm the lead developer for OpenDCIM, which is an open source software version of data center infrastructure management software. Our website is opendcim.org, where you can find downloads and uh, information on how to join the mailing list and the wiki, which has instructions on how to use it uh, and uh, also contains links to the various videos that I have created for this. Today, we are going to be talking about the differences between users departments and contacts. So we're going to start with users because they are the easiest to uh, describe and uh, have the uh, smallest scope basically. Users are simply users of OpenDSIM. You would not typically give the people who own the assets in your data center access as a user to OpenDSIM. You could, but typically that's not what you do. Um, most people would limit the users to the facility department or maybe just to the internal IT department. Um, the users are simply added by going into the manage user screen and um, we've already got our default admin here uh, but you can go into a new, new user and you can add their user ID. The user ID is the ID that they log in to the web page with. Um, if you'll recall from our installation video, we require that you turn on authentication for the web page at your web server level. That's because rather than us focusing on trying to make sure that we don't have exploits in the authentication system for OpenDSIM, we pass that along to Apache, which has got hundreds of developers who are working on trying to make sure that its authentication systems are secure. Uh, we can focus instead on trying to make OpenDSIM work uh, as, a pack as a software package um, and not have to worry about the other bits um, that go on behind the scenes. So um, your user ID is the user ID that you log into the website with uh, and then the name is simply a, uh, a name that helps you to identify the difference um, especially if you have um, cryptic user IDs in a large organization where you can't have the uniqueness of just naming somebody Scott or Bill or, or Wilbur or John um, or Joe. You'd have to uh, come up with other user IDs <clears throat> and then you simply give them the access that's required. Um, managing site and users is what's used to access this particular screen as well as some of the other things like power sources and panels and the higher level facilities pieces um, but you can give somebody enter modify contacts and departments rights without access to anything else um, a good example of that would be if um, all of your racking requests came through a help desk um, then you could give the help desk um, the right to uh, enter and modify the contacts and departments so if somebody puts in a new request um, they can check to see if the department exists if it doesn't then they can add the new department and then they can check to see if the contacts have been put in as well um, so let's move on uh, department administration is where you manage your departments so departments are the only entities that are allowed to be assigned as the owners of assets in the data center. The reason why we tie ownership to departments rather than contacts is contacts are transient. So if um, Joe is the administrator for a server today and um, next week he gets recognized for his excellent service to the company and gets promoted into a different department as a manager, um, that asset does not go with Joe. That asset is, remains the property of the department that he was working for before. Additionally, you may have um, a user that, um, or I'm sorry, you may have a contact that is a system administrator for multiple departments. So you may have a shared pool of system administrators, but various departments that own the assets. So um, it may not be clear if you assign an asset to again we'll use the name Joe um, whether it belongs to HR or accounts payable or accounts receivable because he could have all three of those departments under his umbrella of management so um, departments are entered in just like users you select a new department we'll pull up the uh, one that I've already entered in here which is information technology services um, executive sponsor is typically where we would put uh, information um, like who is the head of this department 
and then the account manager uh, you may have a primary contact a customer service representative that um, deals with this department and then if you would like to uh, specify a different color to display their assets than the default white you can select it here and um, in our configuration screen we had uh, a field where you could enter in different classifications of your departments. This is used um, later on for some reporting so that you can kind of uh, get a feel for how much of your data center is allocated and used by the IT department versus internal which would be other departments uh, in your same company um, and then customer may be uh, departments or, or customers that are external to your company itself. Um, so that's a department. Contacts are the people who you call if you see smoke coming out of a machine or if it's beeping incessantly. Um, this is basically where the this, this is your primary contact in the event of some kind of a facility issue that is localized to their machine. So I've got a couple of uh, contacts entered in here. Uh, we'll pull one up. So we've got uh, user ID of Bill. Um, uh, is Bill Lumberg. Now you'll notice I didn't fill in the phone numbers or his email address and the reason why is because I'm going to show how you can link to a company directory. A lot of companies have these um, today and basically if you can pass along a URL that simply needs the user ID added to that URL then you can um, link in a um, company directory very easily to open DSIM. So let's show you how to do that. So we go into the configuration screen and user lookup URL is where you would put that. Let's just shorten this to make it easier to see on the screen. So I've got um, opendsim.org slash phonebook.php question mark user ID equals so I've put everything in that's required to look up Bill except for his user ID which is Bill. So by entering this into the user lookup URL and then you update it anytime that you make a change to that you want to make sure you update it um, then I can reference his uh, phone directory uh, entry uh, when I'm looking at an asset. But before we do that we need to tie in our contacts to the departments that they are working for. Now a contact can be a member of more than one department and a department can have more than one contact so there's no fixed one-to-one -one ratio on this. The only thing that is a one-to-one -one is you can only have one owner of an asset so you have to choose which department is the owner. But you pull up a department and then you click on the assign contacts button and it will show it basically it will pull a list of all of the contacts that have been defined in the database. In this case I've only got two defined. Um, if they are assigned already they'll be in the right hand side. If they haven't been assigned they'll be on the left hand side. So these are your possible contacts and these are your assigned contacts. So you simply balance out the the uh, boxes so that they uh, reflect what the reality is for your organization. Click Submit and um, now uh, anytime that we have an asset that is owned by information technology services these two contacts will have um, the ability to be looked up as part of that. So if we take a look at our sample device I've got a mail router here and you'll see that it is owned by information technology services. Now I'm not sure if this is going to actually show um, the pop-up screen that comes up. Um, I'll find out after I uh, finish the recording here. But when I look at the contacts, it shows me the two contacts that are Bill Lumberg and Scott Milliken. Um, but then I've also assigned a primary contact. So you can either leave that unassigned or you can assign a primary contact for each of these assets. So it may be that um, when there's smoke coming out of it, I want to call whoever I can get a hold of, but I want to try to get a hold of Bill first. So if you click Contact Lookup, it will reference that URL that we defined in the configuration screen, add the username, and pull up the phone directory, which is exactly what we've done here. If you take a look at the 
URL at the top, we've got opendsim.org slash phonebook.php question mark user ID equals Bill. And here we have Bill's picture and now of course this is not, the directory is not part of OpenDSIM. The ability to reference a directory is part of OpenDSIM. So that is pretty much it in terms of users, contacts, and departments. I hope you've uh, found this useful. Um, also, uh, OpenDSIM is a donation uh, supported organization um, to cover the basic expenses of domain registration and web hosting, um, etc. Uh, also, some of our expenses for the developers. Uh, if you find OpenDSIM useful, uh, please feel free to donate. Uh, there's a link on opendsim.org. Uh, you can pay via PayPal. Um, and if you don't feel like it's worth it, then uh, don't give anything. Thanks a lot and have a good day.